don't have any glasses on. All right, so here we are. I really don't know. I'm having a hard time getting it to be any higher up. Let's see if I can just tilt it a little bit this way. No, that did absolutely nothing. Oh, I accidentally took two. Okay. All right. It's just me talking to myself. Um, I'm really struggling with the space that I have on my desk for this. Come on. Because I'd like to be able to move it down a little bit instead of jamming it all the way up to the top. All right, well, let's try that. I just have a lot going on on my desk, unfortunately. It's just easier if it's a little closer to me than if it's jammed, because there's stuff back there, like, just out of sight of the camera. There's a crap ton of stuff back there. All right. So this video is about um, what I've been doing with my dye lots and what I've been uh, creating for my store. I know most people don't care, but I get so excited. I love dyeing papers. I love dip dyeing them with color. I like coffee dyeing them. I like tea dyeing them. I like trying out different natural things like beets and cabbage and onions. Um, so I just want to share like some of the results. I'm not, well, maybe a little bit. I'm trying to encourage people to visit my shop and check out what I've got, but really the main goal is just to share my passion for dyeing things with you. Um, maybe I'll inspire you to dye some of your own stuff. It's not necessarily about uh, buying something from me. That would be nice, but um, a lot of people think that dyeing is hard or you're not going to get really good results or anything like that. And it can be a delicate process, but dyeing paper is super easy and I wish that more people felt about it the way that I do because they just love dyeing papers. It's so much fun. Um, so this is an orange lot that I've created uh, for um, specifically for Halloween. I mean, it's some summer's kind of an orange color. That's what I was about to say. Orange is also a summer color, you know, sun, fun, like yellow, uh, which I haven't done any yellow yet. That's my bucket list of dyeing things uh, coming up is more black uh, for Halloween. I need more purple. I need to revisit those colors. My red is almost gone, and I have only like two or three sheets of green left. Um, and I used to only do plain paper for the dip dyed, but I've discovered that the dip dyeing process works on works fantastically on a lot of different papers. So I've been uh, trying to dye more things so when I do each thing um, like sometimes I'm not on the Tasha stream and she's like well what color are you dying today and I feel bad because I'm like orange well what color are you dying today and I'm like orange because I dye so many papers and uh, the pan I use for the dip dyeing only holds between 150 and 200 sheets depending on what they are I mean like index cards I can get um, almost 500 and if I do mixed sizes. Doilies I could probably get thousands in there but I only do a few at a time because they're delicate um, and I don't have the patience to carefully pull out and lay out uh, doilies over and over again so I just do those in little batches. Right now I'm only doing 50. I really want to do more sizes um, but I think I've talked about it before. I have a fixed income uh, and then um, they recently raised our, it, we had all this stuff happen all at once that was all financially related. Um, so the money I had set aside to buy like more index cards and more doilies and uh, more of this size index card, or not index, but um, this size tag and a couple other sizes to prepare for fall all went to a rent increase, uh, an unexpected medical bill, and some other things that just came up. Um, so I had the money saved and that's just what happened. And that's life, you know, you can't control everything. So I kind of had the setback and it was in my pity pool for a little while, but now I'm just like, 
I'll, you know, go with what you have, do what you can do. And so I've been looking around at the stuff that I have and what I can use. And so I've decided to put together some lots like this. I already have a purple one and I already have a tea one. And the purple and teal ones are uh, plain paper, lined notebook paper, coffee filters, the three sizes of the index card, the uh, tag, and doilies. Um, this set has uh, different quantities. The teal and purple have 10 of the plain, 10 of the lined. Um, I think they have 10 each of the index. I think there's five of this. Um, this has different quantities than those sets because I've added in two different kinds of papers than I have in the other two sets because I didn't want every set to be exactly the same thing. And like for when I do yellow and uh, some other colors, I also wanted to have some envelopes in. And that was one of the things I had the money saved up for. I was gonna, I had almost $500 to buy in stock to create um, new items for the fall, but also to be able to make some different kits uh, for just for fun, because sometimes, you know, you're going to do a kit and say you're doing a, a botanical themed and you want some light purple and some light pink papers, um, but you don't just want only plain or only lines. Um, so this kit's kind of designed to, to, with that in mind where you might want a variety of things, but not a huge amount of any one thing. So um, this is my orange one for fall and I will have a combo orange and black and a black one to go with the purple because those are kind of my, and I'd love to do a lime green, but I don't know if I'm going to get there because I need uh, four different kinds of dye to make the lime green. Um, and then I would need three or four of each of the colors and I just don't think I'm going to have the money before fall this year. So lime green may be a next year thing, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, you can't have it all <laughs> in the theme of getting on with this. Uh, so this set has, all of the sets have 50 pieces. So it's got five of these uh, three and a half inch doilies. Um, and the colors uh, on this are all kind of in this range. Some of them I got a lot greater variation. Uh, the purple had a greater variation. Um, and the teal had some variation, but it was pretty um, spot on. This has, uh, from the layering and stuff, you got some color variations. And there are some slight shade variations, but not much. I like the um, the saturation of the colors that that I'm happy with, and then there's the tags, and uh, these are uh, I know it's two and a half across, but I always forget how tall they are. So let's see here. So it is uh, four and three quarters by. Uh, slightly less than two and a half. Um, this is a pretty standard size tag. I see a lot of people working with this and carrying it. And these are dip dyed. So I just put them into a rectangular container about this big. And I feel, you know, it's not as tall as the tags. It comes to maybe um, here. It probably comes to about here on the tags. And the, So you put the color in with the tags. And, and mine will hold about 200 tags, which is about how many I dye at a time. So you put them in and it leaves just enough space um, so the, the, the color can wick up because if you pack it too full, what happens is you get color around the edges, but nothing wicks up the middle. So you can see we've got some good wicking on here. And uh, the red ones I have turned out so amazing. And the purple does. Because the orange uh, doesn't separate, like the purple can separate into its constituent colors, which can make some fun color combos. But the orange is not uh, like that. It's So you get darker and lighter, but not... Um, much variation in, ter in, in terms of how saturated the color is, you will, but not um, like the purple separating into red and blue, which you can, which I do get when it's colder and I dye, and it's really cool actually. But um, the wicking came out really good on these tags. I'm happy with those. And then we've got um, in this set, you do get ten each. I think it's ten each. Maybe it's five. Let me count real quick. Hold on. One two, three, so it's five each instead of <clears throat> ten. So five of each size, so five by eight, 
four by six and three by five index cards. These are fun for journaling cards, uh, art cards. Uh, you know, you can collage on the front or um, put uh, digital images, uh, all kinds of things. But then you would have on the back a, a nice color uh, paper to journal on, and most of the colors are light enough that you would be able to use just a standard pen to write with. Uh, when I do the black ones, you probably need like a paint pen or a, like one of those metallic pens in gold or silver to write on it if you wanted to do that because they will come out probably too dark to write on with a regular pen. I do get some variation from black to gray with that, but generally they're not light enough on the back to journal on without a special pen. So you get 15 um, index cards. Uh, you get five of these. Uh, this is a grid paper. It's a smaller It came out of a journal, so I'm not sure of the weight. Um, it's thicker than the notebook paper, but maybe not quite as heavy as the 24-pound uh, printer paper. So it's somewhere in between the weight of the notebook paper and the weight of the a plain paper. So you get five sheets of this grid paper and that paper is uh, almost six inches by just a smidge over eight inches. Oops. Then you get three of the uh, coffee filters and these came out a pretty bright sunshiny orange. Um, because of the way I dye things, they're all, they're all, I like the splotchiness of it. Uh, and that's an effect that I strive for. It's not an accident. I, I actually want that to happen. These will come folded. Um, but once you unfold them, uh, the crease mostly goes away. And if it doesn't right away, you can iron it back out. Um, these are extremely flexible. Spritz it with a little water and let it sit. If that doesn't work, then iron it. But usually the spritzing with water and just laying it and letting it dry uh, fixes the issue. And these are color fast, so you're not going to get any bleeding. So you get, uh, I can never remember how many. One, two, three. Oops. So there's ten of the line sheets. <clears throat> and you can see, I'll, if I do it this way, you can get some nice uh, color variation. But it's a nice orange color and you can still see the lines on the paper because this is a um, Oxford brand paper I pay a little bit more for this because the lines don't uh, start to go away when you dip them in the liquid so I've uh, got some nice a little bit of splotchiness it's just fun I like I like that effect I know some people want it to be perfect um, but if that's the case you really shouldn't be buying a handmade dip dyed paper you should just be buying orange paper manufactured that way where you would get a uh, uniform color. Um, five sheets of the plain paper. Um, right there. And uh, so the reason for the um, low count on the papers here, um, I found that when people have given me feedback, um, the plain paper is always appreciated, but for some reason, in the dip dyed paper, the uh, line notebook paper is pretty popular. And I made it an even amount in the other kits, but I cut down on the printer paper, uh, the plain printer paper, in this kit because you're getting, uh, in addition to those, you're getting this grad grid paper and these music papers. You get two of these music papers. So, um, and these ones are, are pretty plain. Uh, these are probably from the 90s, although some of the ones I dip dyed went all the way back to the 50s. It just depended on how strong the paper was. I just went through my box of giant music sheets and picked out the ones that seemed flexible enough that you could still fold them after they were dip dyed and that weren't going to disintegrate in the liquid. So that's the 50 items for uh, this set. And with the tags, the other colors that I currently have are purple, teal, and red. And I give these away as goodies a lot. Um, but you can see the wicking here. And I accidentally put some of the red tags in upside down. So uh, you got some that were 
from the top and some that wicked up from the bottom. I don't like to do these tags from the top uh, because these little protector thingies come off when they get wet and they are a pain in the tush to glue back on. But I got some really great uh, color with these and I'm really, really happy with how they came out. So far I have only done four colors, I think. Let me double check. Red, orange, purple, and teal. Yeah, so I've done four colors. And I have enough tags to do one more color. And I was debating between um, pink and black. I'm probably going to go with the black simply because um, people are going to be starting to make their fall and Halloween journals. Um, and so I think that I, I want to be able to offer something for the season. Um, and I don't know how many people are going to be doing wanting pink papers in the fall. Um, I will keep the papers in and hopefully um, I will be able to buy in the supplies I couldn't buy that it was really excited about soon. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So that's why I was just going with, I looked through what I had and I decided, you know, what can I do instead of feeling sorry for myself about what I couldn't buy? Because that's just silly. You can't spend your time feeling sorry about yourself. Now, oh, here we go. So, um, while I was doing that orange stuff, and I've been bad, that orange stuff's been done for a while, and I just haven't taken the pictures yet, so I need to take the pictures and get them in the store. Um, then I did it <coughs> around, at the same time. I usually have two, sometimes even three dye batches going at a time. Uh, I usually have a coffee one, a smaller tea one, or a, a second coffee, and then I usually doing a color. So I've been working on orange and pink lately and I need to switch it up to the purple, black, brown and uh, I need to get on it with the green because I think I only have like three of the plain papers. I never did any lined with the green so I want to make sure I get the green in. Um, the trouble that I'm having with the lined notebook paper is I am almost out of my Oxford paper and then all I have left are harvested uh, papers from old spiral bound notebooks. And those are smaller than eight and a half by 11 because they are from spiral bound notebooks. But they're more vintage because they're from the mid eighties to the mid nineties. So uh, some of the papers are up to 20 years old. Those do not hold their lines quite as well. So while I was working on the orange and the pink, I did, I've talked about the Harry Potter book pages a number of times. These are the coffee dyed ones. Now let me see where I, if my head was not attached, guys, it would, I would, it, I would lose it. I would totally put it down somewhere and be wandering around like a fool. Or contrast, here we go, I found it. I wanted to show, because somebody looked at this, I was showing somebody in a in a chat, a, a friend of mine, and she was like, well, that doesn't look that exciting to me. It's, it's you know, it doesn't seem that dark. Um, so I did this. Here is one of the pages, and these are actually pretty dark. And if you don't believe me, we'll separate that. Here's a white sheet of paper. Here's the original page. So this is 92 bright white paper. This is the original book page. So the Harry Potter, the hot, well, the, both the, I think the soft bound uh, trade paperback size and the hard bound are this off white paper. So you can see the difference there. And then this is the coffee dye that I did. I did get some that were lighter than this because I did basically a whole mega batch where the bottom of the bat of the dye vat was plain paper, but pretty much the entire rest of it was either coffee filters or these book pages. So they were kind of layered up in there. So um, obviously the, the deeper you go in the vibe dye vat, the longer the paper's been in there, the darker it gets. I found the best effects on the paper, if you're looking for markings from the dye specifically, not from the laying out and drying process, the best papers are near the end where it gets kind of oogie and near the top 
um, because it gets more exposed to the air, you'll get more um, of the bubbles, which leave the occlusions on the paper. Um, you'll get some interesting, um, on the top view papers, that's where you get that, it looks almost like, uh, like the paper's growing a, some kind of fungus, but it's just, I showed before on the collages, that markings on the back where I said, that's usually in the top, three to five sheets you'll get that if the paper has been at least partially exposed to the air while it sits in the color um but this this paper this scholastic paper um it folds really well all by itself it takes the dye really well um it folds really well occasionally i have found that there's a little bit of brittleness um but not very many. I think it, I folded for a custom order and did this uh, probably to 200 sheets of paper. And uh, I think maybe only three or four where, the, where I folded it, I got a little bit of brittleness where the paper started to crack. But out of 200 sheets, only a couple doing that. And... I don't know specifically what causes that, um, but uh, it, it, I think it happens a lot of times in the paper where something has pooled and then been left to dry without draining it soon enough. And then I iron the paper and the iron makes where that pulled, pooled uh, brittle. So it, when you fold it, it cracks. So I, I've been trying to be very careful about that, but you know, sometimes you lose track of stuff. So, um, these do make a uh, good size journal or art cards. I did not cut the edges off on this um, because the person who wanted the paper didn't ask for it. And then I had so much left over. I made them for myself. And I'll show you um, in the next couple of videos some of the things I did with those. Uh, but yeah, this took the color really well. So uh, I'll flip through a couple of these just so you can see the kind of the effects. And um, there are a few polka dot sheets in every lot. I only have one polka dot pan. I want to get, um, so I have four of them so I can get more papers. On this size paper, I can fit two on the polka dot pan. Um, and a lot of times, depending on time of year, um, in the time it takes the paper laying on the stove to dry, I can get two sets uh, of the paper. But I still, I'm still never going to have, with only one pan, a significant number of polka dot papers. I'd like to offer with the um, plain paper um, just polka dot lots, but um, it would take so long to accumulate the papers at the rate that I currently dry them. Um, so I want to have up to four pans eventually. And then I've got my eye on some additional pans for drying that will create new and fun shapes on the paper. But um, all of them have a few sheets of the polka dot in them. And I'll flip through one more for the, so you can see the, the color. And then I'll move on to something else so I can end this video. But that gives you some idea of how they turned out. Um, and these will be in my Etsy store. I am going to be using quite a few of them um, for some various projects for myself that I have coming up. Just because I have so many. Um, the person requested a lot and then backed out of the order. So somebody else stepped up, uh, and that's where I, how I wound up folding a lot of them in half and gluing them, um, which is time-consuming and weird because my fingers were like glue. Cut, and the glue stays on your hands, and you even when you wash them, you're still picking off bits of glue. It's crazy. But um, so I have tons and tons of. Harry Potter book pages and I will be tea dyeing and putting them on, on, on my Etsy so I've just decided I'll use them in a bunch of different projects because I have them and it's a good size page um, and then this is the coffee paper that came out of this this is what was in the bottom of the dye lot so it came out you know pretty dark I'll put the white paper there and I got pretty good markings on that um, these papers have cinnamon in them. I did, I've done a couple of lots with the cinnamon because everybody's raving about that, and I just wanted to give it a shot. Look at that nice grungy page. Um, again, these were closer to the top, so they're still dark, um, but not quite as many markings. And then um, these papers have 
more markings on them because they were closer to the bottom. So you can see you get much darker pages, more markings. Um, and then the ones you see with the lines on them are from the drying pans. Like these lines right here, that's from the drying pans. I dry them on some racks and some various pans and stuff. So um, these are going to be 25 lots for the Etsy shop. Um, I kept 50 for myself. So I go through coffee dyed paper so fast myself and then what I put in the store too. So it's kind of crazy. Um, and then what I do, I know I keep losing where I set my stuff. I'm so sorry. My mind is I'm very scatterbrained today for whatever reason. Okay. So this is the tail end of the plain paper dip dyed lot uh, that I did for Darla 25 pages. Um, and I, I rarely ever just do 25 pages if I'm doing it. I, I figure I might as well throw in and do you know, a bunch of pages and just have a good time with it. So these will be going on either Etsy or eBay and I kept probably 75 pages for myself. Um, just because I like the variation and you never know when you're going to need a colored paper. Um, so these are the blush pink and these have a little bit lighter or a little bit darker pink with them. But this is what I call my blush paper. It's mostly light pink. We've got some good variations. I like it to be mostly light pink with some darker pink markings. That's what I strive for when I put the dye in the water. So I'll show you, I'll just do a clip, flip, flip through on two of them and then I'll move on to the next thing because you don't want to see pages. It's just so much fun. So much fun! So there's all of that. Alright. Plain paper. And the pink usually sells pretty quick. I don't know why I let it go for so long without any. I get sidetracked with whatever color I'm working on, and I can get carried away. I did um, probably about 300 sheets of notebook paper. Um, and this is the uh, Oxford paper. So I'll just do a flip through on a couple of these so you can see kind of, um, again, that's white paper. So uh, it's a pretty dark, uh, even the lighter shades are no longer even close to white. Let me get you an original line sheet just so that you see that it's not. This got some drip on it. So here, that's the color the paper starts out and that's the color it's wound up. So you can see even just looking at uh, these here, this is lighter and that's darker. So you can see just even in, in these four um, sets, got a, a pretty good color variation and I try to mix it up so you get some really dark and some really light and then occasionally I will offer like super grungy lots I save those papers up and I either keep them for myself or eventually I post just a lot of super super grungy papers so we'll take a quick spin through some of these look at got some good markings on there That's from the cinnamon. When you wipe it all off, it still leaves, um, you know, some markings from where the grainy texture where it laid on the paper. It absorbs in a little bit. Now these don't reek of cinnamon, and I have trouble smelling because I have super bad allergies. <laughs> I took these to my son at his desk, and I said, um, "Shove your face in these papers and like." and like do this and get your face as close to the paper as you can and inhale and he just looked at me like I had lost my mind and like it's supposed to smell like something in particular like I didn't tell him I put cinnamon in it because I did these while he was at work and so he did and he's like and I'm like so what does it smell like and he just the look on his face if you could have seen it you would have just fallen out of your chairs laughing he's like it smells like cinnamon and I'm like oh thank god because that's what it's supposed to smell like <laughs> and he was like oh good I would like to do some with vanilla but I don't think I should use extract because and that's oily 
I think it would make oily spots on the paper. So I'm wondering if I should try vanilla bean, like, and put that in with some papers, maybe with some cinnamon or something like that. And I've toyed with the idea, and I'm almost 90% convinced myself to do it, of doing it with some, uh, making up a batch of uh, pumpkin pie spice for the fall coming up and doing some papers with that. Um, and then, of course, I want to do a super big batch of tea dye with Earl Grey just because I love the way Earl Grey smells. And my super cheap tea that I use regularly, um, I don't know who would buy that to drink it. One, it, it says English breakfast tea, but it smells nothing like actual breakfast tea, like the kinds you would get in a nice tea store. Um, but it does produce a nice color, even though it just smells like tea. It doesn't smell like that good breakfast smell. And then, you know, Earl Grey is its own thing, which I love. But yeah, so we got some, did I show you the second one? I think I showed you the second one. Anyway, he just was my poor son. Some of the things I asked him to do. So we'll just flip through this one because I'm not sure if I showed you a second one. So yeah, and then again, these are from the drying pan. These lines like this here and here like that. That's from the drying pan. That doesn't come from the dyeing process. Uh, so that's what I have to show you for this one. Um, oof. And then I'm trying to put that in the wrong place for the done stuff. Uh, that's what I have to show you for this video. I have one more video of things to show you from the dye process. Um, some of it's not necessarily going in the Etsy store. It's just stuff I was having fun uh, playing around with with the dye process, and I just want to share it. Um, so you'll know I'll title it what I've been dying <laughs> for all the videos that have dye stuff in them. So if you don't like this kind of video, if you did not enjoy this at all, you thought this was boring as uh, watching paint dry or grass grow, then um, you'll be able to avoid those videos in the future. I will be sure I label them plainly so that you don't get sucked in and think you're watching something you're not. Um, and at 32 minutes, I'm going to call it the end of this video. Um, I Thank you if you have watched all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. I hope that you are having an amazing summer. Uh, that the heat is not getting to you too much and that you are having lots of fun. I will see you all again soon. Bye!